Hello, everyone. Welcome to Reiki Radio. I am your host, Yolanda. And this week, I wanted to talk to all of you about our paths changing. And, you know, even within that, us changing. And the reason I wanted to talk about this today is because it has been coming up a lot, um, not just for me, but people that I have sessions with and people who reach out to me. There seems to be an air of significant change going on for so many of us. And speaking of that, um, if you are interested in learning more about the energy of every month, you can access my free download, which is called Creating with the Moon and Stars, where you can learn more about the energy of every month. And there are some exercises in there for you as well to support you on your path. And you'll also get access to 22 days of transformation. So you can get all of that now just by going to my website, theenergeticalchemist.com, sign up for the newsletter and click the links. So that aside, um, there is this air of significant change or transition that is happening for a lot of us. And while it's easy to say, I mean, of course, change is constant. We're always transitioning and changing through our lives, whether in our personal growth, our points of view, but also there are profound changes in how we live our lives, whether it's, you know, the relationships that we transition in and out of, or the careers, or the um, uh, experiences that we have. So much change happens and so much within those changes change us. Now, what I wanted to talk about more specifically is the discomfort around it and the fear and the doubt that comes up with change. And the reason is because, you know, when we take time to connect with what is really going on, like why we're really in resistance, we not only give ourselves an opportunity to work through that particular barrier, but we also open a window to our own self-healing because there is a reason we are in resistance that is usually linked to some underlying fear, such as a lack of confidence, or perhaps we don't believe we are worthy, or perhaps we just, I mean, the list goes on and on. So when we are in fear of change, oftentimes whatever is holding us back is a deeper issue that is going on with us that if we take the time to work through it could actually open us up to possibility on so many levels throughout our life and not just in this particular transition. So one of the things um, that was coming up around this too is the contrast, which is that sometimes there is a lot of joy and excitement around change. So it's not necessarily that we are afraid of change all the time or that we always resist change. So that's one of the things I would say to first consider for yourself. What have been some times or circumstances in your life where change was upon you? Either it was unexpected or it was just something that you were personally initiating but it made you excited. You were looking forward to the change. What about that lit you up? What about it made you feel excited and willing and open to the possibility of change or doing things differently, even if you didn't know the entire outcome? What was it about that situation and how it related to you personally that made you feel like, you know what, this is going to be great, or this has the potential to be wonderful. Consider what those circumstances have been. And again, more importantly, how you related to them, why you saw it as an opportunity, why it excited you. Now, on the other side of the fence, I want you to consider a time where change was upon you, whether unexpected or just a decision you knew you had to make. 
But either way, it was very uncomfortable. You were in resistance. You may have been afraid. And it could have been as simple as just afraid of making the wrong choice. But whatever it was that had you in resistance, consider why. Was it a lack of confidence? Was it fear of making the wrong choice? Was it afraid of hurting others? Are you caught in the expectation of um, having like just some unreasonable expectation for yourself? Is it about perfectionism? Is it a fear of being judged? What is it that held you back when you were in resistant to some type of change in your life? Now, here's where it gets interesting and why I wanted to talk about it, because oftentimes we want change. We are so uncomfortable in where we're at, or we feel called or pulled to do things differently, and yet we don't. There's that fear that builds up. We can't seem to find like the joy and the um, excitement around the possibility of moving toward what we actually say we want. Now look at that contrast. How does that even make sense? I want to make a change, but I'd rather sit in my discomfort because why? What is really holding you back? Now, I've told you all before um, that I've created a, an alchemy circle. So there are people who um, we meet once a month in the alchemy circle and we talk about different topics. And it's interesting because I wasn't even making this correlation until just now, but we met yesterday in the alchemy circle. And what I'm sharing with you now kind of tied into the conversation that we had. And it was about, you know, um, transitions or recognizing the different aspects of us that do hold us back in any type of situation and how we can work with and through that aspect of ourselves so that we can move forward. But more importantly, so that we can heal a layer that we're holding on to. And that's one of the things I want to um, highlight as well. Last week on the show, I talked to you about the power of why. Um, if you don't see that visible in your iTunes or on YouTube, go to Patreon and you can become, um, you could just become a patron even if you don't sign up for membership and you can access that particular podcast, The Power of Why. Um, so when we are working through our layers and recognizing our resistance, we oftentimes can connect more deeply with what is motivating us to help us move beyond the hump, right? So for example, when I wanted to share with people, um, I was terrified to do it. I was afraid of judgment. I was afraid of all kinds of things. I mean, I had never done a podcast before and um, I was, you know, believed that I was very shy. And at the time I didn't think that I would be comfortable with sharing with people, especially people I didn't know. But I had to consider what was holding me back. I understood what my fears were. I understood what my resistance was about. And I had to work through those layers. But I also had to consider my why. What motivated me? Why did it even matter to me to do a podcast? And I had to let that motivation, the why, be more important or um, be much bigger than my fear. So I needed just that little bit of confidence to uh, push myself over the edge into trying, to putting myself out there. And then over time, the fear started to dissipate. I worked through those layers over time. But the point is that I took the initial step because of my why. Now, in the process of doing the podcast, I think I started it in 2013, I have learned so much about myself. And there are layers that I've had to work through again and again to keep showing up in this work. But more than just showing up and sharing with people, Taking that one step, making that one change, created a domino effect of potential healing for myself. Working on confidence, working on sharing my voice, working on not needing validation or um, not being 
um, held back by other people's judgments. So when we are feeling that change is necessary or we are feeling called to move in a direction or try something new, but there's something holding us back, imagine how much you can do for yourself by not just leaving that at the surface, not just going like, well, I'm just scared. Well, I'm just uncomfortable. Oh, what if? What if you step back and actually connect with yourself and examine the truth? Why? Why is this so hard? Why is this so uncomfortable? And then what really matters to me? Is my discomfort more important than what it is I want to accomplish? How can I make what I want to accomplish or experience more important than my fear or discomfort? What do I need to work through? What do I need to encourage me? What is my why and what will inspire me to just take at least one step to support me going in the direction that I know I want to experience? Now you hear in this work and you've heard on the podcast me talk about the layers all the time. And things take time to unfold. Everything doesn't have to be like some big drastic shift or move, right? So a lot of times when we are uncomfortable, we're out of our clarity. And if we're making decisions out of that space of fear and discomfort and worry, we often make these drastic decisions that throw us in more of a tailspin. Now they may work themselves out over time, but it's not necessary. What you can do is make the choice to step back and connect with yourself in a deeper way. You can book a session with someone and get some clarity of mind. You can go into a meditative state with the intention of coming out of the chaos of your mind, allowing yourself to settle into the higher mind and ask for direction and guidance. There are so many ways that you can help move beyond whatever feels stuck so that you can start to facilitate change in ways that are more supportive. Our paths change, we change, and with that, you want to make sure that you're not too attached to anything, especially not outcome. And I say that to you because even sometimes the experiences we think we want to have or the changes we want to make, we have expectation wrapped around them, right? So say, for example, you're in a job or a career and you're unhappy in that job and you think, I am so uncomfortable, I need to change. I want to go into a new work environment. And so you go into the new work environment and you have this expectation that it's going to be better than the place that you left, but you find that you are faced with the same challenges and you're like, what the heck is going on? Well, what is going on is you may not have worked through your triggers, your discomfort before moving on. Whereas if you had taken the time to look at why am I uncomfortable? What is causing me to want to make this change? What is coming up for me? What is triggering me? If you work on those layers and still decide to move forward, at least you're not moving forward with the same wounding. You're not moving forward with um, your same ways of responding to maybe people you don't like or environments that are uncomfortable. It always comes back to us and our life experiences always give us opportunities to highlight what it is we are holding and how what we hold and how we perceive things impacts all of the experiences we have, no matter how many times they change. So I guess just to clarify what I'm saying is whether you feel stuck, whether you're changing, decisions you have to make, all of it. You want to really understand the part you are playing in all of it and what is influencing your decision. Is it a wound? Is it your fear? What is influencing the change that you want to make? What is influencing whatever may be holding you back? Work on you. Work on your stuff. Get clarity because then the changes you make and the decisions you make are going to feel more aligned and more supportive. 
and you will trust yourself more knowing that you're not making decisions that on the other side you're going to beat yourself up over like oh maybe i shouldn't have done anything different i still feel like crap or maybe i shouldn't have went this way because i was expecting things to look different come out of that noise ground into yourself what is truly going on for you what do you truly want to experience what are you ready to heal or transform to support you in the changes in your path the work you do on you supports the changes in your path no matter which direction you choose or the the, the decisions you make got tongue tied so I hope today, no matter where you are and what is coming up for you, you do take time to consider just that. What is coming up for you? Where are you and why? Where are you stuck and why? What are you motivated to do and why? And how can you better support yourself by being engaged and involved in your process as these changes occur? Because again, like I said at the beginning, change is constant. Life is always changing. I mean, if you think back to 10 years ago, did you think that you would be where you are now? Did you think you would have had the experiences that you've had? There's a lot that we can um, decide and there's a lot of influence we have in our paths but there's still so much in the unfolding that we can't predict. We have no idea of knowing how it will be until we give ourselves an opportunity to show up and to try. So I hope that you are able to gain some clarity on your path um, wherever you are. Again, learning about the energy of this month may help you because there will be a lot of opportunity this month that holds the mirror very steady for us. And you can access that information by signing up for my newsletter at theenergeticalchemist.com. And for those of you who choose a membership through my Patreon, it's patreon.com forward slash Reiki Radio. If you become a Reiki Radio insider, you will get free content or bonus content um, every Tuesday. And it's just tools and tips to help you on your path as well as you have access to the first five modules of intuitive mastery. So if you are working on developing your intuition, that may be something that will help you a lot. And if you decide to become a member of the Alchemy Circle, you get access to the Tuesday updates as well as our monthly group sessions where we can go deeper into whatever it is that you are working through. So, that's all for today. Um, just wanted to show you before I did this recording, I pulled a card to ask what would best support us in the changes that we are all going through at this time. And the card that came up is intuition. And, you know, a lot of times when we are in those spaces of not trusting ourselves, we often, you know, look for outside validation or someone else to tell us we're right or whatever. But there is no greater guidance you have than your own inner and higher knowing. And we hear that all the time. And oftentimes we mistrust it because we don't trust based on the decisions we've made in the past. But this is about accessing your higher mind, moving beyond just the analytical mind, receiving your own higher guidance. So once you do practices that help you to get familiar with the higher mind and the more you connect with yourself, the more you will start to trust your inner guidance and the more um, graceful you will be in dealing with the changes and shifts as they occur throughout your life. If you want more information about um, connecting with yourself and even being more observant of yourself, the 22 Days of Transformation will support you in that as well. And that's also a free gift by signing up for the newsletter. So, yeah, I hope that something in this inspires you today. Um, if nothing else, sit with yourself and just consider what is coming up for you and why, 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 why. Um, and you can join us in the Seeker Circle if you're looking for community and want to connect with other people who are doing this work as well. And you can get the link to the Seeker Circle on my website. 
Okay, so that is all for today. If you are um, have any questions or anything you want to ask, always feel free to email me. I thank you so much for being here. And remember to always journey in love.